Welcome back. 412-575-2600 on the Borders and Borders Hotline. We're taking your calls, answering your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. A couple of things I want to update you on. Pirates, of course, in Milwaukee tonight. They lose to the Brewers 10 to 1. I got to mention it. A lot of people probably don't want to hear about it, but I got to talk about it anyway. So we'll just, for the sake of posterity, we'll throw it out there. Of course, Penguins had a preseason game today in Columbus. They lose that one, three to one. Uh, nice, impressive slap shot goal from Yuso Rikula uh, from the left point. One of the probably the few bright spots in that game. And the backup goaltender job is something that's probably going to be discussed based on the results of that game. And it's something that Mike Sullivan says has been a point of contention throughout the point throughout the throughout the course of the preseason. So I imagine that's something that we will hear more about as time goes along. But all the same, we are just a couple weeks away from the start of regular season hockey. We're getting to one of my favorite times of the year. You're going to see postseason baseball. Granted, yeah, I know the Pirates aren't in it, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. You'll see postseason baseball. We're going to see NFL. We're going to see college football. We're going to see hockey start. We're going to see high school football. We get a lot of good stuff happening around this time of year. So we're going into the my favorite month of the year uh, being October, and there's another reason too, but we'll discuss that in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Judy in Springdale. Judy, you're on the nightly sports call. Hello, Professor. I'm going to tell you real quick. Duquesne won. That's freshman grandson. <laughs> they beat Dayton. Bad. Shout Joe, out to Duquesne. Listen, and then Slippery won 49 to 0. Big one for Slippery Rock. Congratulations to them. Shout out to Slippery Rock. That's all. That's all? No, I mean, yeah. No you questions? Know, I, Nothing? You don't want to talk about anything else? You don't want to talk about Steelers? That's it? We could talk about Dancing with Stars if you want. <laughs> um, you got me on that one. Sorry. All right, honey. I'll call you next time Duquesne, Duquesne wins. <laughs> Thank you for the call. I'm always interested to hear if Duquesne wins. you got to represent my alma mater. Thanks for the call, Judy. Let's switch over to Sean and Al Quippa. Shout out to the Quips, by the way. Big win last night. Sean, you're on the nightly sports call. You there, Sean? <clears throat> hey, what's up? Hi, Sean. Bye, Sean. Thanks for the call, though. I, I don't know what happened, but whatever. Um, let's go to Jacob in Upper St. Clair. Jacob, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi. I wanted to talk about, um, uh, ask about uh, Kenny Pickett let's and, do it. Uh, and why he always has to uh, go with the sideline and talk to the, um, the coaching staff. It just seems like there might be a more efficient way of doing that. I don't know. Why does that matter? I don't know. Me neither, but thanks for like, the call. It, it just seems look, like he's just wasting time running, always running to the sideline just to see what next play is. Would you prefer he doesn't know what's going on? Because I'm just that's the only other alternative. there would be a better way of, of doing it. That, thanks for the call, Jacob. I, 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 didn't he just beat UCF at home? I mean, he had a pretty good game last week against Penn State. The, past, the previous two weeks... He had career highs in passing each of those weeks and completions. So he did that against Ohio. New career high in completions and passing yards. New completion record and passing yards, uh, personal record against Penn State last week. In a game that they probably should have won, and I'll totally admit that. Then he goes in and knocks off UCF. After getting hurt, comes back in, catches the game when he touched not this. I, that's, that's your complaint? That seems kind of useless. I don't know. Let's go to Jack in Hollidaysburg. Jack, you're on the nightly sports call. Good. How you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, not bad, thanks. Uh, the Pirates. Sure. If they don't fire a hurdle, there's something wrong. In fact, they're going to go right to the top the whole way down. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. I was about to say, if, it, if that's the only thing is just firing a manager. Uh, uh, no, it's not just the manager. It's, it's yeah. the higher echelon, too. I agree. I mean, they're, they're a disgrace to watch. And Marte. How bad is his wrist that he can't play for, what, seven or eight games now? Um, it must be pretty bad considering the fact he's played most of the season. But thanks for the call. He hey. don't want to play for the Pirates, put it that way. Did you see the season that he's had? Yeah, but. I mean, no, no hold on a second, and, and thank you for the call. But if you've seen the season that he's had, now granted, this team's season went down the toilet, what, mid-July? And he was the lone bright spot on this team after the season went to the toilet. We're still questioning what that guy's doing. Still, literally the best team this had, this thing, best thing this thing had going for about six weeks, and we're still questioning him of all things. It, I, you're better with your first point that they needed to have a lot of changes from the top down. I'll agree with that because my thing is, outside of Starling Marte, outside of Josh Bell, and outside of Brian Reynolds, 
If you want to make a case for Kevin Newman, by all means do so. Where's your talent? Where, where's your prime talent? I, I've, made this, I've, I've made this argument for weeks now. You know what the best teams in Major League Baseball have? Kids and pitching. And by kids, I mean players that they, they develop through their minor league system, that they come up in their elite, their elite young talent and pitching. Whether it's young pitching, whether it's veteran pitching, but it's experienced pitching and it's good pitching. It doesn't matter if they're young or old, old or new, it doesn't matter. Kids and pitching. That's what the best teams in baseball have right now. It's what L.A. has. It's what Houston has. The Yankees have. It's what Atlanta has. Milwaukee, to a degree, I think they have the kids, maybe not enough pitching, but we'll see over time. It's what the Cardinals have. Just follow the pattern. That's what those teams have. I think that's the difference, really. If you really want to talk about what the difference is with the Pirates and every other team, they don't have what those teams have. They don't have enough kids that they developed and become elite talent, and they don't have enough pitching. That's pretty much it. That's what it boils down to. Let's take another break. We'll talk a little bit more when we get back. Stick around.